everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a Taurus Millennium G2 on the table. This is the PT111 model, which is chambered in 9mm. And this has become a very popular gun in the sub $300 concealed carry pistol market. We've released a couple other videos on inexpensive concealed carry guns, and this one kept coming up. So we went ahead and got a hold of one so we could do a review on it. So let me pick it up and show you a few things about it. We'll start out that, of course, it is unloaded. This gun is a, it's a polymer pistol, steel frame, or steel slide. The, this particular one is the stainless steel variety, and it also comes in a black slide variety. Right now, the prices are starting to creep up a little bit. We're, at the filming of this video, we're creeping into the election cycle. But I've routinely seen the black slide ones for around 250 and one like this one for around 290 There is some variation as to whether or not they come with one mag or two, so when you're comparing prices, verify. This particular one came with two mags, but I've seen them with just one. Uh, however, you may find them significantly cheaper than that, depending on where you look and the timing of it. So it is a very inexpensive pistol, and it's a high-quality pistol for what you're paying. It comes with a 12-round magazine. It may come with one or it may come with two. It does have a pinky extender. And I'll show it also has witness holes on the back side and a brightly colored follower making it real easy to spot. When the magazine is installed in the gun, it does nicely extend the grip. So you actually get a good three finger grip. If you've got larger hands, it might be two and three quarter finger. I can get a three finger grip on it with the pinky extender installed. And it does have some sandpaperish feeling texturing on the, the entire grip, including the front strap and the back strap. But it doesn't, it doesn't abrade your hand. It does give you a good solid grip, but it doesn't scratch or abrade your hand. But one of the things you will give up on this gun as opposed to some of the more expensive guns like the Glock or the FNH that it might compare with is you don't get a replaceable back strap. So the size of the grip on this gun is what it is. Uh, unlike the SIG P320, you know, it's not interchangeable grips. So this is just the way it comes from the factory and it's the way it is. But it is quite comfortable. It's both Hammer and I were able to hold it quite comfortably and easily manage it. Uh, I have average size hands and he has large hands and neither one of us had any problem with the grip on this gun. Some of the other features it has, it has a single slot Picatinny rail for lasers, lights, and other accessories. It does have a curved trigger guard but no checkering. For those who like to put their finger in front of the trigger guard, it is curved, so you've got kind of a, a place to seat it, but it's not checkered. And it is nicely undercut here to be able to get your grip up kind of high. From a safety perspective, this gun has multiple safeties. It has the split trigger, which is part of the drop safety mechanism. It does have a mechanical thumb safety, which is quite easy to operate. It's easy to flip it up into the safe position or down into the fire position. And it has internal drop safety, the piston style drop safety like you've seen on many other guns. Now, one thing I will note, that this gun along with several other Tauruses, uh, quite a few years back were involved in some safety recalls and safety issues where they would fire when they were dropped. The Taurus dealt with the suit and they've made engineering changes to resolve that. So newer ones that you purchase like this one that we just picked up are you know, most likely going to be perfectly fine. You may want to be a little more cautious if you're picking them up on the used market. You may want to verify with Taurus that any uh, things have been dealt with, that the, that gun's had any safety recalls applied. But the uh, lawsuit, when, they, when that went through, they extended the warranty on the older guns and also agreed to fix any of them that had any issues. <clears throat> Unlikely to be an issue with a newer one since they've gone through that and that's all been closed out and dealt with. From a sights perspective, it actually has pretty nice three dot sights. The dots are a little bit small, so they're a little harder to pick up, but even on the range we were able to see them quite clearly and they stand out real well, nice high contrast. And one unique thing about guns in this particular category, uh, this one, the rear sight, is, uh, rear is adjustable. It's height and it's windage and drift adjustable and it comes with this little key that's part of the locking mechanism that I'll describe in a second, but one of the arms on this key is actually a screwdriver that fits this sight. So if you have this key with you, you actually have the tool with you to adjust the sight. Uh, if you don't have the key, a regular, you know, like a jewel or screwdriver will do it. The sights are dovetail replaceable at the back and pinned at the front. 
but like the Glock and many of the others, the pin is actually a screw that goes through it from the underside. So you can unscrew it and you can pop the sight off if you wanted to replace it with you know, night sights or fiber optic or any other type of sights. <clears throat> now this key that I was talking about, one of the arms on this key operates the Taurus integral locking mechanism, which is right here. And you can lock the gun in a non-fireable position by turning this key and turn it back and render it functional. Uh, a few of the things that are important to note about this, number one, this is not intended to be used with the gun loaded and it's not intended to be used with the gun uh, in a cocked position. They specifically indicate that in the manual. So you have to unload and you do actually have to pull the trigger to decock it before you can engage the safety. The other thing that you may want to be careful of is, though this is a safety and does disable the gun, depending on your local jurisdiction, it may or may not actually meet the qualifications under the law because, you know, the way laws are worded, it, it, they aren't necessarily logical, it's just the words that are used you may actually have to have a visible trigger lock or something like that. But this is provided with the gun and it's on all of the Millennium G2s. And while I've got it turned on this side, it also has a loaded chamber indicator. This will protrude a little bit when the, the gun is loaded right here up in the top. So when, you're, when the gun is loaded, this will kind of stick up a little bit. It doesn't stick up quite that far. There's a little bit of red on it that is barely visible. It's more tactile than anything but it does kind of stick up right here. So you can tell that the chamber is loaded. Some of the other safety features involving the drop safety I'll discuss when I get it apart. The only other thing that is worth talking about on this is the trigger. The trigger on this is actually surprisingly good for guns in this territory. Uh, we recently reviewed a Sky and it had a better trigger than some of the others you know, in that, the sub $300 realm. But it was long and it was, hard, you know, it was kind of heavy. This trigger is long. It starts here. Of course, we do have an unloaded gun. Let me pull the magazine to make that easier. There's quite a bit of take up. It's very light take up, but it's significant take up. And it comes all the way here to the back. And then there's a somewhat longish, kind of somewhat scratchy break, and then it breaks, and you have some significant over travel after it breaks. And then the reset. It does have a nice reset for guns in this territory. It comes right back out and you're right on the wall and it breaks again. This trigger, according to Taurus, is between five and nine pounds. This one's coming in around six and a half. But we did find this gun a little bit difficult to shoot well. Uh, because of the trigger and the significant travel and the over travel, the trigger is breaking so far back by the time you've gone through all the take up that we did have a tendency to kind of lose our position with it. As far as accuracy, the gun's as accurate as any other gun. As far as ease of shooting it well, we did find it a little bit difficult with this trigger, but when we worked at it, spent a little time with it, we were able to bring our groups in. So expect this gun to be one that you have to spend a little bit of time with and you know, kind of work on getting used to this particular trigger and bring your groups in. Now one unique characteristic of this trigger that's worth talking about, it's one of the few partially cocked striker guns, and this is a partially cocked striker, that has double strike capability. And that is really unusual in, in, in many of the striker guns. They're either double action only, meaning it's a long full pull every time, or they're the equivalent of single action only where the gun cycles, cocks the striker, you pull the trigger, if it doesn't fire, you have to cycle it again. This one, you can actually double strike. So we'll start out with the gun cycled, ready to fire, pull the trigger, it fires. If I hit a dead round, I let the trigger all the way back out again, pull it a second time and I've got a heavier double action pull and it fires. And I can repeat that as many times as I want to in an attempt to fire the round. Of course in all reality in a, in a defense situation if it doesn't fire on the second try it's probably time to get that round out of the chamber. But that is a unique feature of this particular gun that isn't found in most of the other striker fired guns that have the partially cocked strikers. So at this point let me take it apart show you some of the internals. So you start with pulling the trigger, after of course verifying it's unloaded, you pull the trigger. And this is an interesting point, the manual doesn't mention pulling the trigger, but if you fail to do so it won't come apart because it is a partially cocked striker so the, the sear is still connected and it won't come apart. And then just like a Glock, you wrap your hand around it and just kind of close your hand a little bit to take the tension off the spring. Pull down on these little tabs, there's one on each side, pull down on these two tabs, and then the slide should pop right off. 
Now I have found that this one tends to be a little touchier than Glocks. You have to wiggle it around a little bit every once in a while, but it will come right off without any force. And then we have the slide. Looking at the machining in here, it's machined very smooth. There's no extra you know, valleys and things that don't need to be there so that there's not a lot of places for stuff to collect. And the quality of the machining is very high, so it is, is nicely machined. Now, as might be expected, there are some minor machining, you know, like marks. They didn't go back through and do a second pass to polish out various, you know, find little marks and, you know, stuff like that on it. But that is the machining quality, the basic machining quality of this is higher than I've seen in many guns in this territory. And you know, when you get into the higher end guns, they go back through with another finish pass and they, you know, make sure that they're perfect. But everything that would be functional is well done. And right here, as I mentioned, is the drop safety piston. So the gun is drop safe. Standard looking striker sear, just like you'd see in a Glock and many of the others. Let's go ahead and pull the barrel out of it. You do have a captive recoil spring, dual recoil spring. And the 3.2 inch barrel, which is a nice, it's a nicely done barrel. It has a fairly polished feed ramp and it's, a, it's overall as I've, as I've handled this gun I've been really impressed with the overall quality of it for a gun that can be had $250, $225. Putting it back in, of course you got the guide rod double recoil spring assembly. Pop that back in and make sure it seats and kind of centers in there. There's not really a, a U-shaped well like some of the other guns so you have to just make sure it's centered. And I'll show you the frame. The frame has some very robust slide guides up at the front, and they are steel. Nice solid locking block. And then smaller, but still well made, guides at the back, which are also steel. So that you're, you're going to get some longevity and reliability about it. The gun is actually made to last and hold up quite well. So let me go ahead and reassemble it now. Reassembly is fairly easy. You just line the rear of the slide up with the slide guides, slide it back. Now it is important to note that there's quite a bit of play at this stage. That's not going to affect its function, but it can cause it, when you go to slide it all the way back, it can cause it to hang up. So you want to do make sure that it's straight and it's going all the way back. If it gets kind of sideways, it may hang up, but it also may catch the guide rod and pop it out of place, causing it to protrude from the front as you pull the slide back. Lock it back, make sure that it's centered, pull the trigger, it still functions, and now you'll notice that there isn't that play. So that play is not a, a functional problem, it's just something that can bite you during the assembly process. From a size comparison, this is designed to be concealed carry, possibly even pocket carry, and it competes with several other guns in this, in this territory. It's got a 12.1 capacity, so I'm going to bring in two other guns that have 12 plus 1 capacity. We have the SR9C. By, by Ruger, and it's got a pinky extender as well. And this pinky extender on the Ruger gives you a real full three-finger grip, but of course it makes the gun a little bit longer. And I've got this FNS 9C, which is also unloaded, and also has a pinky extender, and also gives you a three-finger grip. So I'm going to line these up, and what you'll see is from a length perspective, when I get them lined up back to back, the Taurus is the shortest of them, and then you get into the Ruger and the FNS being roughly similar to each other. Let me put the magazine in so I've got kind of apples to apples. And the grip heights are really kind of about the same, but then when you factor in the various pinky extenders, they come in, you know, fractions of an inch above and below each other. Of course, the, you know, this is the, the Taurus is kind of the shortest but it also doesn't give you a complete 100% three-finger grip if you've got bigger hands, but it's close enough. So from a size perspective, they really it is really competitive with all the others. The other gun that you might be looking at in this is a Glock 26, which holds 10 plus 1. And the Glock 26 is, is smaller than any of these, but then, of course, you are giving up two in capacity. So let me pull the magazines out just so you can see the grips without the magazines so the pinky extenders are taken out of the game. And you'll see that the Taurus is actually just a hair taller 
but overall in the grand scheme of things we're talking frag fractions of an inch, not a significant difference between them from the various heights. So what you've got here is a gun that really is targeting that concealed carry, pocket carry, inside the waistband carry, and really does come into that quite well. So overall, you know, the gun has a lot of positives. Obviously the price, the construction quality, the very rounded, melted aspects of it so that it doesn't smack into your knuckle when you fire it like some of the, some of the guns that have sharper edges here. It's, it's an attractive gun. It looks nice. It has nice serrations on the slide. The biggest negative I would say about this gun is the trigger. Uh, Hammer had a hard time ever getting good with this particular trigger, and, but yet can shoot other guns quite well. I found that if I really, really focused on it and spent time with each trigger pull, I could shoot it well. This is a gun that I would say, if you're, if you're not used to guns of this trigger type, plan to spend a few hundred rounds getting used to the trigger. One of the things that you'll find as you move up in the price grouping, you know, get into Glocks and FNS and some of the others, you will get nicer triggers. You'll lose that double strike capability, but you will get an overall nicer trigger. But from a quality perspective, from a function perspective, you spend your $300 or $250, depending on which one you get, you pick this gun up, it should serve you well. Spend time at the range, which you should do anyway, get used to that trigger, you should be able to shoot it well and you'll have gotten into a concealed carry gun that's actually superior to like the Sky and some of the others that we've compared. So the various viewers that liked this gun, they like it for a good reason. So if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, and have a great day. Thank you.